All right, well, you've seen the relay installed now. Let's just talk about real basically how they work. These are super simple. Don't make this complicated. All a relay does is it takes a small electrical current to close a switch to allow a bigger electrical current to flow through. So we're going to put a small current through these poles, and when DC power comes through this one and goes out this one, that'll close the switch up here and allow current to flow from this one to this one. Okay, so what that means is you don't have to run this big giant wire from your battery, you know, a real big wire like this from your battery all the way into your cab. Try to connect it to a little switch like this and then have another big wire going back out to um, your winch or your compressor or something else big. You know, maybe you have an inverter. So these all take a lot of power and a lot of amps. You know, a winch can take three, four, five hundred amps. Uh, you know, it's a lot of amps. Uh, my inverter pulls 160, 180 amps. A compressor is going to pull a lot of amps. So this relay allows you to use small wires, something like that size, and run them up into your cab, into a, a switch. So you can put a switch inside your cab and you can turn it on and off. That's a small wire. It's a small current that closes a bigger switch that allows you to use bigger wires. And also then your runs for your wires like this aren't real long. You know, if you use, if you're using a appropriate size wire, for your winch, but then you have to make it 10 feet longer to get inside your cab, that's you know not gonna work because that's gonna increase the electrical resistance and you're gonna have to use an even bigger wire. So there's a lot of advantages to using a relay. All right, so I've already wired up a couple things just to not waste too much of your time here, but you can I'm gonna wire up a couple more things so you can see how it goes together. So this hot wire comes off the positive post, of course. I'm just using a bigger cable. You just you need to use appropriate cable for whatever, however many amps you're pulling. You can up, look up amp wire size charts all day on the internet and figure out how big your wire needs to be for how long it is, how long your run is. So basically this is just for an example. Um, and so you can see the different sizes of wires. They'll make a little bit more sense. Then we have a negative wire coming off here that goes over here. And so basically the relay, this is gonna be our load wire. You know, This is gonna be the wire that actually does the work. Let's say we're connecting this to a switch controller or a small compressor. Okay, so basically we're running this wire off the positive it comes around here, goes into the one side of the relay, and then we're gonna run this other wire out to the other side, off the other side of the relay, and connect this to say our compressor. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna use a light, okay? So this is what this is gonna look like. We're just gonna wire this up, and this little LED light here has a positive and a negative. The white's actually the negative. So we're just gonna clip this here. Okay, and then we're gonna clip our hot positive here to this one. So now we have our circuit, positive comes here, uh, goes through here to the light, um, negative comes out of the light, goes back this black wire to the battery, okay? The only problem is this is the switch and it's open right now, the switch is open, so it can't conduct electricity. There's no light coming here, right? Now let's look at how to close the switch. So of course you'd be hardwiring this in your vehicle, but here we're just gonna use a couple jumper wires, okay? Red to red, black to black, simple as that, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect now, in this case, this one doesn't matter. We're gonna connect this wire to this, and we're gonna use this to touch. Now we're gonna connect the negative to the negative battery and the positive to the positive side of the battery. Now, we're gonna just touch this, because this what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring positive current into this side of the switch. It's gonna allow the current to flow out of this negative one back to the battery, right? So we have a complete circuit here, and we'll see if our light turns on. Okay, did you hear the click? Now in this case, let's just switch this over. Does this matter? Nope. Now I like these relays because it's easy to see which one's your main load and which one's your switch load. Now normally you would have a switch right here on this thin wire somewhere where it's convenient for you to get to. Maybe it's in your cab, maybe it's somewhere that it's convenient to get to so you don't have to get to this relay and clip these on or plug in your little connections there every time to turn on the relay. You would just have a little switch and it could be anywhere in this red wire. It could even be in the black wire if you want, but um, that switch would allow you to turn it on and turn it off effectively like we're touching it or disconnecting it. Now, of course, in the truck application where we use the relay and the diesel pickup, we had our aux beam switch inside our cab where we just touch a button and that powers our aux beam switch controller to send current to this right here. So in the cab, we can just hit that button. It powers this, it makes the connection, it powers my inverter, 
and then I just have to turn the inverter on or off inside the cab as I want. When I shut the truck off and turn the, take the key out, it actually powers down the aux beam, which automatically powers this down. So there's no chance of this being a parasitic drain, or there's no chance of my inverter being a parasitic drain. Okay, so don't get the idea like I did that maybe this would act like a fuse because it's rated at 200 amps. Now, the inverter in my truck, remember, was a 2,000 watt inverter. So amps times volts equals watts. So we can take our watts, 2,000, divide it by our volts, 12, and that comes with up with about 160 amps. So 12 volts times 160 amps is about 2,000 watts. Okay, so about 160 amps is all my inverter can actually pull. So let's say I had the hot wire coming off my battery here and coming here, and then after this, my hot wire coming off and going to my inverter, what if something cut that wire? What if it chafed into the frame and shorted out? That would be 200, you know, up to 200 amps going through here. This would stop at 200 amps, but this doesn't act like a fuse. What could happen here is this could melt down or destroy itself inside and still conduct that 200 amps through here, and then you have a fire, and then your vehicle burns down. So you still need a fuse. This is not the perfect example. You still want to fuse as close to the positive as you can absolutely put it. So if it can be right on the positive, that's where you really want it. So don't get a solenoid and a relay confused because they are two different things, but they work very similarly. How a solenoid works is it works on the same principle as a relay. It uses an electrical wire to close a switch. And then that comes to the solenoid. And then the negative wire comes to the solenoid as well. Okay. But the difference in a solenoid and a relay is the relay, the electrical current closes an electrical switch. Okay. That's all the relay does. A solenoid uses the same current and the same electrical switch, but what it does is it actually, the electromagnet inside actually causes something to happen. And usually it moves a shaft or a rod that comes out of the solenoid, okay? So when this is electrically activated, the electromagnet in here causes the metal inside to move because the magnet causes, when you put a magnet against a piece of metal, it either pulls it toward it or pushes it away, right? So an electromagnet, that's all it is inside here. Once the electrical current comes through here, it doesn't take much, but that electromagnet's activated and will cause a rod to move or a plunger to push or something like that. Okay, and if you watch my champion repair video where there's three ways to get your champion generator going again, it's, it's the dual fuel kind. One of the problems is a solenoid inside that generator. And so that solenoid actually blocks off the flow of gasoline. So if there's no current going to the solenoid, the gasoline's completely blocked off. It sits in the bottom of the carburetor and it's a little rod that goes up inside the carburetor and blocks, physically blocks the flow of gasoline from getting into the carburetor. So it's that's in propane mode. Now gasoline can't get in and the propane can come in from above and can run your engine. But let's say you don't want to use propane, you turn your propane off. Now, how do you get the gasoline to flow in? It takes an electrical current. So this generator actually has to have a battery power to close this, to move this solenoid, to activate the solenoid, to pull this down and get this rod down and allow fuel to flow into the carburetor. Okay, so over here in our generator, our battery's still hooked up. We're gonna switch it to on, not to start. And then we're gonna turn this switch on and let's see what happens to the solenoid. To the needle. Okay, here goes, switch on. So you see how that pulls away and that allows fuel to flow up from the bowl um, into the carburetor so it'll run on gasoline. Now I'm gonna, so this is switch on, right? Now I'm gonna switch it off and there's a little spring inside that pushes it up. So, okay, so when you turn the switch on, it's an electromagnet that pulls it down, right? A solenoid that pulls it down and so that has to be energized all the time, okay? So this can fail. If this, you know, if your, if your generator will run on propane but it won't run on gas at all, you can tap on this, you know, you can bang on it and try to get it loose. You can take it apart and make sure it's, it moves freely. So I'm gonna de-energize it, okay? So the power's off. It should move in and out, okay? You're pushing against the spring right there, just like that. So that should move easily, right? And then so when you energize it, you can just test this yourself. Energize it, make sure it goes down. Um, turn it off, make sure it goes up, that's working. But if your generator will run on propane but won't run on gas, this is something easy that you can test and make sure it's working. So that's how a solenoid works. And there's all kinds of solenoids, but the solenoid is basically a small current that allows the solenoid to do mechanical work. The relay 
is just a small current that allows an electrical switch to close. Okay, so what do these numbers mean on the relay? 85, 86, 87, and 30. It's real simple. I'm going to explain this to you real quick. So we have a relay that's, uh, let's just draw us a little relay here. And you might find a relay that actually has tabs on all four positions instead of studs here. So you might find these little tabs here. You might find four of them, and it'll look like this. Doesn't matter. This, these numbers are all standardized. They're all the same. So anybody that produces a relay, and if they're going to meet the codes for producing a relay, they have to have these numbered correctly. And so you'll hook them up correctly. And so it's real simple. Let's put a battery right here. We'll have plus and minus. There's our studs. Uh, this first one we're going to talk about is going to be 86. And this is going to be our 12 volt in, okay? So 86 is gonna come off here. We're gonna have a switch here that, so that we can turn it on and turn it off. For me, that's my aux beam, or you might have a little switch in your cab, a little rocker switch, right? And that'll come up here, and this will be 12 volts in, okay? To complete that signal, the signal wire, or we can call it the trigger switch. So this is the trigger switch that triggers this to close, right? Um, what comes out here is the ground. And we'll make a little ground signal here. And that's the ground. And that is numbered 85. So I'm just calling this the signal, or this is the trigger switch. Uh, different people have different names for it, but basically this is this circuit right here. Now the other two numbers are, we're gonna have positive coming in here, and this is gonna be 12 volt in also, right? Plus 12 volts. And this is gonna be number 30 right here. So 30 is going to be 12 volts in. So this is the work. This is actually what's work. This is the work that we want to do. And then the number 87 is right here, that pole, and that's going to be 12 volts out. And so 87 will be 12 volts out. Okay, now if you work in electricity, like in household wiring and that kind of thing, and you understand line and load, um, this is kind of the line right here. 30 is the line, and 87 is the load, okay? So again, all these numbers are standardized. 86 and 85 will be your switching circuit. And then for your main bigger wire that you might be bringing in here, that's plus 12 volts in and plus 12 volts out. Now what's interesting is you can, they can position these however they want uh, on the outside here. And they made it for convenience. They made it easy to see. So this is here. These are opposite of each other. But on a lot of relays, you'll see 30 and 87 opposite of each other and 86 and 85 opposite of each other. So your 12 volt will come in here, go around the coil, activate the electromagnet and come out the other side. And then 30 and 87 will be a direct pathway through the relay. Doesn't exactly work like this in this one, but in some of them, you'll see that. Okay, maybe an easy way to remember this is just to write the numbers out like this, from bit smaller to bigger, 30, 85, 86, 87. What you're trying to do is connect 30 and 87, okay? And the only way to connect 30 and 87 and to get them together is to plug in 85 and 86 between the two of them. Now we have four numbers, okay? That may be a simplified way to look at it, but that's an easy way to remember it in your mind. Hey guys, if you learned something, please give the video a like. And also, I always enjoy reading your comments. And we all learn so much from each other, so be sure to let us know what your experience is with these down below. Alright then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.